It's been a week since a renewed bombardment of eastern Aleppo began, and there's still no end in sight. But Aleppo isn't alone in its despair. Today, the United Nations said the number of Syrians living under bombings, isolation and starvation has more than doubled in the past year to nearly one million people. The UN calls it a deliberate tactic by the Syrian government to force civilians to submit. One city where that's been painfully successful is just outside the Syrian capital. The CBC's Margaret Evans is there. In the city of Kutsaya, on the edge of Damascus, resistance is starting to disappear from sight. The rebels are out, the regime is in. Part of a fight back by the Syrian government to regain control of the fractious suburbs in its own backyard, cutting them off and essentially starving them out. They call it reconciliation. Life has returned to the streets here in full just over the past few weeks. The city under siege for months at a time during the past four years. It was very bad. Uh, we have no food, no bread, uh, no uh, open market uh, at all. The people uh, here was a uh, very bad situation. The relief is palpable, and people seem pleased to see outsiders in their midst, welcoming despite their own hardships. I hope that. Dr. Rami Esmail has just returned to the city to open a practice. They didn't have medicine, um, and also there were uh, like no doctors here. Kutsaya had been an opposition stronghold since the start of the Syrian uprising in 2011. Anti-government demonstrations taking place here, just opposite this mosque. But last month, the city's rebel fighters followed in the footsteps of other opposition groups near Damascus in recent days, laying down their arms in exchange for safe passage to rebel-held territory in the north. Critics have condemned the siege tactics backed by military force, but others believe it offers the only way forward. Elias Salmon is an advisor to the Minister for Reconciliation. Since now everybody knows that the war is not going to end very soon in Syria, obviously. The idea is to di differentiate between local reconciliation, which is happening right now, and between the national reconciliation as a, as a national project that would come after a comprehensive political resolution to the crisis. It's a process he firmly believes will save lives. The government wants us to see scenes like this. It says that what it calls reconciliation projects in towns like Kutsaya prove that most Syrians support the government. But one man's reconciliation is another's defeat. And with war still raging in other parts of the country, even the word seems to imply a false utopia. Syrians will quietly tell you that given the extreme nature of some of the rebel groups, the government is simply the lesser of two evils in a world where their choices grow more limited by the day. Margaret Evans, CBC News, Kutsaya.